good morning everybody <coughs> from uh, from England UK um, I've been interested in uh, sewing machines now for a very long time and learnt how to uh, treadle when I was in back in 1978 and I've had a very interesting time with uh, sewing machines ever since the reason why I'm going to start doing these videos is that um, on YouTube I'm just disgusted really what how people are treating these machines and particularly the 201 which seems to be the hip and happening machine at the moment and unfortunately uh, it's just getting a lot lot worse and there, there's going to be problems in the future that these machines are, are just going to be uh, decimated really and they're, they're going to be in such a poor state, bad state of repair and this was just primarily due to um, abuse by people that think they know what they're doing with these machines and actually don't know what they're doing with these machines. Um, so the first thing I would be asking well who are you to start criticising other people? Well uh, I started off um, uh, back in 1976 uh, doing light engineering um, for three years and due to the recession it was a good idea to get out of engineering because the factories were closing, we were in recession and there was no real hope for a young engineer. So I went into nursing and then specialised in theatres. Um, and then re-specialised into orthopaedic theatres and basically I've been doing doing that on and off with over 47 years. This is highly technical, a lot of bioengineering and uh, mechanically you had to be very much on the ball if you were prepared to scrub up and stand at the table and put people back together. So the thing is, is I've, I've always had an interest in engineering I love these machines and the other thing was is that I uh, come from a long line of engineers, some of them quite famous, so it's very much in the blood and unfortunately what I'm seeing at the moment is just horrendous and I just want to sort of try and rebalance that by giving you proper advice and basically what I will be doing is going from absolute basics right up to the more complex stuff. Um, and the, the, the whole thing about this is getting it right, not on hearsay, not what somebody's written on a blog, not what somebody's put on YouTube, but I can clearly show you why you do this and why you don't do this. And there's a lot of th <coughs> things like the melt temperatures of grease, that is just rubbish, I'm afraid. The temperature has very little to do with grease on the um, 2013 and 2012 um, and you'll find that very interesting because it goes against grain with which everything it says on blog sites and on videos but I will clearly prove to you how it actually works so first of all I'll do an introduction of um, the machines and what they're about and then on another video I will then extend it on to cleaning, oiling and then stripping the machine. Now the thing with stripping is I only strip a machine if it needs it. Not because the person on YouTube says oh do this, do that, do that. It's not about that. If these machines are sewing and they're sewing okay you basically just clean and oil and leave them. That's the best thing you can actually do with them. So. I'll, and I'll explain this more as we go into the videos in, in the future. But first of all, we'll go through the, these machines one by one. So I'll pan round and this is a 201 stroke one. So this is a treadle machine. Uh, this is 1954. Um, my wife bought this for uh, 40 pounds and the thing about this one was that it was, it, it's hardly been used. Um, all I had to do was just brush out a bit of lint and uh, then oiled it. 
nothing wrong with it, no need to strip it down, doesn't even need a screwdriver against it. So we'll pan back round and we've got the 201-2. The, these are all K um, machines, they're all made in Scotland, so but they are basically the same as the American machines. Now, this is a 2012. It has what's known as a potted motor. I'll just move this three out of the way. This motor attaches uh, via gears to the main shaft and it's a sort of direct drive, if you like, onto the, onto the machine um, to make it turn. Now, the thing about these is that it's they use lubrication via wick system for the motor and the rest of the machine is oil. Now, why have I got two up here? There are two versions of this and the pro they look both absolutely identical, but they're not. One is a uh, earthed machine, this is the earthed machine, this is your standard wired Singer machine. If I was to plug a standard wired machine end into the power source, this machine then becomes live. It is a very very dangerous uh, machine and has to be treated with respect and you need to know about electrics to understand this. This, this is another point I will raise in the future. They look the same, but they're not. Um, and the way you can tell that is, I think you can see that, is on a standard 2012, it is flush, it is in line with the uh, flywheel here. On the grounded earth machine, it is off to one side. So this machine is earthed. I have to use a special cable to, to use on this machine where the central one is, is earthed. On the standard wired machine, power goes through the central one and that would then become um, uh, live. So if I was to touch that, I will get electrocuted. Okay, so this is my warning about these machines and electrics. Electrics, you have to know what you're doing with them. And what I'm seeing on YouTube is they don't even color code the um, wires, which is totally incorrect in my view. So that's the warning on these. Now these may turn up, um, <coughs> somebody contacted me about one and they had one in New Zealand. Where they went, whether it was just in Britain, I'm not sure, but these are ones you have to watch out for. Okay, both the 202, 201-2s and 3s have to be rewired. No ifs or buts about them, due to um, the cabling uh, was vulcanised rubber for the insulation that has long since perished and broken down and they, these machines cannot be considered safe uh, until they've been rewired and any electrician worth of so would condemn the motor uh, on these machines. So that's, but I will talk about that later. Now the 201-3 has a solid um, flywheel as does the 2 but the one has a spoked uh, hand wheel, flywheel, whichever way, way you want to talk about it. So you have the three. Basically that's an external motor with lamp. So solid wheel um, and external motor. Now if your machine has got spoked here, this is a Boton um, motor and it's been added to uh, so the thing, uh, thing about that is that it's not a three, okay? 
This machine, it was in a very poor state. Uh, somebody had left it like that inside a garage and what had happened was the uh, it was full of grit so I had to clean, uh, clean it out as best I could and then I steam cleaned it to remove the grit and it took quite a long time to do but the full, now fully functioning and that's absolutely fine so we've done the one two three and then you come to the four just bob round uh, so 201-4 this is also a spoked hand wheel just like the one with a crank on it now this is uh, a bit special because this was the uh, made in 1934 and this was the first year of startup of the 201 in Scotland so it's, it's a bit of a historic machine in very very good condition and it very very quiet very very smooth and hasn't been used that much um, beautiful machine that one now what they did do is they then pr produced an aluminium one I'll just put that across um, basically the same machine, the internals are, are, as far as I can tell, are the same, but they use an aluminium body, they are slightly different if you compare the two. Uh, <coughs> they've got a external motor, like the three, and they also did them with a hand crank. This one, uh, somebody had stripped it down to the last nut and bolt, reassembled it and wondered why it wouldn't run. So the thing was with this one, I had to strip it right the way down, took the crank out, find out what the problem was and it, it does run but not particularly well due to the damage that was actually done to the machine which does prove a point. So this is a basic introduction to the types of machines. There was one other machine uh, which is the 1200 which was basically the um, 201-2 on a uh, large sort of um, table uh, and that was used for tailors um, but they still use the same motor now there's, there's a lot of uh, myth about these machines and how people use them. I hate to see them being used with sort of 13 layers of denim. I hate to see them being used with very very thick leather. These are not leather machines and shouldn't be used as such. It's okay for very very thin machines, uh, th thin leather, but not for, th for the thick stuff. Get yourself a, a what, Singer 45, something like that, which is a dedicated leather machine. These are a strong domestic machine and not to be out over overused on, on sort of like the power side. They, they are very good at what they do, but don't stretch them thinking that you can do 13 layers of denim or extremely thick leather. They're not up to that. So that's a, a basic introduction to the 201. Uh, I will carry, go into the next thing of actually cleaning um, and oiling these machines correctly. All these machines are oil only, apart from the motors on the 2013 and 2012 where you need a special grease, but you do not grease the gears on these machines and I'm, I'm, I'll keep reiterating that because you are advised to do that with wonderful greases and wonderful this and wonderful that. No, you don't. And I will fully explain that. And I will be using this to demonstrate why. So basically, uh, I've got these parts, they're on sale, put them all together, and I'll be showing you how this machine works and why you do you do certain things and not others 
Um, before anybody says anything, um, I couldn't get this uh, cog all the way down, this gear on, all the way down uh, because this had to stay quite high. So it just gives you the example of how it works, but not an exact. You've got three sets of gears. This is the beating heart of the 201 and these have to be treated with respect and used correctly and oiled, cor clean correctly, oiled correctly. And uh, that's it basically. So there will be other videos coming online uh, as and when I can do them, but it will be very intense from, from somebody who hasn't touched a machine before to somebody who knows the way around one. And I will be explaining exactly how these machines should be treated. Thank you.